Pyro Sim. And E3 is happening. Holy butts, you guys. There is so much stuff. News, games, and I'm left not very excited. You're not excited? I feel exactly the opposite, because that, as a little kid, like probably you two, I thought E3 was super romantic, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. It's the big video games party. And then as I grew up, I was like, oh, E3 is not so exciting anymore. And it went through that phase where it was much smaller and more business oriented. But just this year, I, I, my interest in E3 has been thoroughly reinvigorated because there have been a million video games and my Twitter feed has caught fire since E3 started. And I like it a lot. Basically, I'm not excited because, like, everything E3 this year is either a reboot or a direct sequel or a sequel by another studio. Except you know, that's... if they actually promised that this was the end of the series. That's categorically untrue. Uh, Beyond, which, by the Heavy Rain guys... That's one. Ni no Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. That's the Studio Ghibli one. With it. it looks exactly like an old Studio Ghibli animation, despite being polygonal 3D graphics. It's really cool looking. Two. Um, Do you have the dock? Let's see. What is Dishonor? Dishonored is essentially Assassin's Creed mixed with Skyrim with a bit of Thief. And that is... Oh, and is, a bit of Bioshock. That is a sequel and an old IP? No, that would be three. And I had accounted for that one. But, like, everything that people are making a big deal about just isn't that exciting. Like, we, we can go into our first topic right now. Halo 4 can eat a dick. <laughs> like, I, I don't care. That storyline ended in Halo 3. And I really dislike that... Because of the quest for more money, we have to revisit it. I sympathize and, and with that. And once again, we're fighting with the Covenant because we that are, wasn't we resolved. We fight with in... the Covenant a tiny bit, but the Covenant do not appear to be the primary antagonists of this story. No, line. there is there is a new unique enemy to the game. So the fact that in the first scene you shoot a few Covenant who happen to just be nearby and also interested in this, like apparently forerunner robot people. Which that... unfortunately will probably translate to the first few hours of gameplay, and instead of getting the usual flood appearance, we'll probably be getting a forerunner appearance. Yeah, but I if I like the idea, as given in the trailer, that the Covenant War had ended and that the Humans were moving on and trying to do peaceful things, and then there's other things in the galaxy. The galaxy is not just humans and Covenant. There's right. more stuff out there. And I'm, I'm just not excited for this anymore. Like, I thought Reach was a cool idea when it came out because, you know, it filled in gaps and was a chance to do, like, yep, this is classic Halo with the best graphics and gameplay that we could manage. And that was it. Uh, Reach and ODST actually felt like generic retreads for me, especially from the perspective that Bungie had said they were not really interested in this universe anymore, and yeah. that they were developing these games out of contractual obligations. But Halo 4 is not being developed by Bungie, it's being developed by 343. It's being developed by the people who wanted to develop Halo, the people who wanted to move on to new things, or moving on to new things, potentially right. including and Marathon. Marathon, which, yeah, that's news. Marathon is another thing like SimCity, where it, it was a great game a long, long time ago, and the technology has advanced so much that you can just go right back to it and do it just the exact same thing again using modern technology, and it'd be totally different and right. worthwhile. So speaking of that, SimCity. Yeah. SimCity. SimCity's pretty pretty kicking. It, it last week or awesome. the week before where I was like, you know what license that I haven't seen for a while that could really benefit from new technology? SimCity. And I totally did not know that they were making one. But I, I'm yeah, very didn't, excited Yeah, didn't we mention it. that already? Last yeah, we week. did. Yeah. That was our closing conversation of last week. It had and, previously uh, been announced, and I don't even think there was a lot of new material released on it. Yeah, there was that trailer, though. 
Uh, the trailer was out, and I don't think there was a on-stage yeah. demo of no. SimCity. Not yet. That was an E3. Um, so, that, that's just something that they talked about a little bit that we already knew about. Um, there's this thing called Wonder Books, apparently, that's uh, in collaboration with J.K. Rowling. It is like a peripheral for the PlayStation 3 that is a book, and from the videos, they don't make it clear exactly what the peripheral is, but it seems like it's just a book with a AR target on for the camera to look at, and then it shows you some 3D stuff on your TV corresponding to the book, which, uh, it's, I'm kind of glad that they're still using the move, because they... It was looking very dire there for a little bit that they were going to introduce the move and sell a bunch of units and then it would be Not a power it. glove or a VR boy and it'd just die and never be used for anything. Right. But they're doing something with it, even if it's kind of dumb. But You know what? At least they're trying something new because really, like, consoles are getting kind of flat. Yeah. I'm and sorry, all we're doing is retreading the same ground that we've already done. If it's targeted at young audiences, which it seems to be, then it could be a nice hook to get kids reading. If they're already on their PS3, and it's an interactive book, then they're like, yay. Yeah, I have a feeling this is actually using just the, the PS3 i technology. It is. Yeah, and then we've got just this pad that it's designed to appear on. Yeah, the the eye is sitting on the table there. I mean, it looks really cool. Like, provided that there's content created for it, it could be awesome. And as far as content goes, having J.K. Rowling on board is a good first step. Right. That that is a fantastic first step for. Because as it is, Pottermore is already like a huge thing. But right. it's a huge thing. But I, what is it? I know that it's there, and they sell the Harry you, Potter ebooks, but you've never been on it. I've I've been to it, but I haven't explored it in depth. Well, it's it, like, like forums. No, it like guides you by the hand through like the books, and you like it like gives you a vi I I don't know how to explain it. It like gives you a visual representation of each chapter by chapter. You can, like, look at stuff, and it gets, supplies you with additional information about the universe and about where stuff, like, characters came from. And Think like a director's to... cut of the books while you read them. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty awesome. That... I'll have to check that out. Plus, you can get sorted. It's like the definitive personality Facebook, test thing. Facebook quiz. <laughs> But it's her official But one. it's official. An official Facebook quiz. Not on Facebook. Um, does does the hat ever yell at you? And you get, like, another quiz for, like, what kind of wand you get. Uh, I'm just having flashbacks of that video we watched on Crack where it's like, yep, everyone who's put on Slytherin just kind of lead them to the back room and take them out in advance. Except that never happens. <laughs> no. I like the idea of resorting to Nazi tactics to prevent Nazis from arising. Right. Um, also, not everybody in Slytherin was bad. Just saying. Sort of similar to Wonder Books is Smart Glass, and this is Microsoft's Xbox 360 thing where you can use your smartphone or tablet as a peripheral to your Xbox 360. And this seems like it cuts the Wii U off at the knees really hard because... The install base for smartphones and or tablets is enormous. So, while you're... It's not necessarily every single person who owns a 360. It is a lot of people. A lot more people than own a Wii U at this point. And it does basically everything the Wii U does. Because you have a second monitor, and it has multi-touch input, which the... As far as has been announced... The Wii U tablet controller only supports a single touch, and that's just pretty awesome. You use your smartphone, you get a second screen, and just need developers to develop for it. Um, another thing I have attached here is that Sony apparently sort of intimated that the 
Vita would connect to the PlayStation 3 in that way. Uh, they said that PlayStation All-Stars has cross-platform play between the Vita and the PS3. And it breaks my heart, personally, that the Vita does not have two shoulder buttons. Because if it did, it would be incredibly obvious to use the Vita directly as a PS3 controller. Because PS3 controllers already connect using Bluetooth. And the Vita has a Bluetooth radio in it. And if it has all the same buttons as a controller, it's it's just magic. That's a that's a Wii U controller right away, with a multi-touch back surface and a second screen. But no, that's this tiny little oversight. Maybe they'd work around it. Maybe you can use it as a controller without the second sets of buttons. But they haven't announced anything like that. Um, I'm gonna skip around in our notes here while we're talking about the Wii U. Uh, Scribblenauts Universe, or Scribblenauts Unlimited. Yep, I, I saw it, so now we've got Scribblenauts with some actual, like, technical power behind it. My previous perspective on the Wii U is that I don't quite see the point. The Right. A lot of games on the DS have used the second screen as a totally auxiliary thing that you don't look at 95% of the time. Yeah. And I don't know the value of going to that in a living room where it's even harder to look between the two screens Especially because when one of them is in your hands one of them is in your hand and one of them is like 20 feet away across a living room that's much more prohibitive to look between them but uh scribble knot seems like especially in a multiplayer configuration a way where it makes a lot of sense because you can devote the entire monitor the entire television to the game world and just put a keyboard and a scribble word display on the tablet controller. And that makes even more sense in a multiplayer configuration because they announced that you can have two tablet controllers for the Wii U now. Which, thank goodness. Yeah, because previously it was only one. And that would have been really dumb. Yeah, I don't think the Wii U is going to do as well as the initial Wii, mostly because they've, you know, upped the value. They've upped the price. Right. Which, maybe they've downed the value, because um, yeah. the speculation is that a lot of casual money that we got from the casual market is people who were into it for the athletics, who wanted to move around. Right. People who saw it as, hey, this is something new. So if you're using the tablet controller, you're mostly sitting on the couch. Right. And there's actually a new... He was also tapping into a market that had been pretty untapped. Yeah. Right. The the idea that this is a motion-sensitive game. No, the idea that people who who don't classify themselves as gamers can play this. It is true. My mother did end up buying herself a Wii and a... That she never used, but... That That's kind of how my family ended up with a Wii, because, I mean, obviously I am in a very satisfied relationship with my PC, and have never felt the need to stray. But at Christmas at one point, Dad was like, let's get a Wii! And I was like, why do you care about a Wii, or even know what a Wii is? And he's like, no, it's fine. And then <laughs> we got a Wii, about this. and have never used it. My my little my little sister loves it. Hasn't quite figured out fencing yet, but she's three, so we'll give her a pass. And, um, yeah, but like all Wii games, you can just flail hard enough, and it'll work. That that's slightly true. Um, <laughs> that's see. not slanderous at all. <laughs> it's I, completely true. My. Uh, my dad even actually managed to beat us in a game of Wii Bowling, so there was that. <laughs> Don't feel like bowling? Too depressed to go out? <laughs> you could Wii Bowl! Yeah, the, though of course it is a bit of a running joke in our circle of friends that we could do this or we could go bowling. <laughs> Pretty much anything's better than that. Sorry to any bowlers who might be listening. Actual Thanks. bowling alleys are crappy. Get your full of... hand away from your mouth. Duh. Cheap pizza, and they smell like smoke from back when people smoked in bowling alleys. 
And yeah, they're no. full of the kind of people who go to bowling alleys. <laughs> the state we live in, you can't smoke in a bowling alley. But you used to be able to. You yeah, to you, you, to. Can't li- you can't smoke in a bowling alley in my state either, but they still smell like smoke somehow. That probably... I haven't been to my local bowling alley in a long time, but I suspect it still has a tiny little arcade section with, like, hydro thunder like machine hockey. in it. Yeah. Uh, maybe, like, a basketball machine. But yours is fancier than ours was, clearly, because we had the Simpsons, a pinball machine, and an air hockey table, and that was it. Right. <laughs> and I, I think maybe the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. <laughs> I fondly remember playing Hydro Thunder in that bowling alley. Never had an arcade growing up, but I did have some arcade machine stuck in the corner of bowling alley. I take right. it back, bowling alleys. I love you. My bowling alley had a Samurai Showdown. It it wasn't very good. Nope, my love is capricious. I hate bowling alleys again. (laughs) So, the Old Republic got some press. They made it free to level 15. Which Starting in July. I don't know how to uh, feel about that. That's very quick. Uh, My interpretation of that is that they're not making money, and they're trying to draw new subscribers. My, my gut reaction is their numbers are not as high as they thought they would be. Well, so. we, we kind of know numerically that their numbers are not as high as they would be as they thought they would be. It's right. 1.4 and allegedly falling to the three or more million they expected. So, they're a little under half the reasonable hopes. And at any given point when Pyro and I are playing, it's like... I'm the only person on Alderaan, or there's 12 of us on the station or something. Yeah, on the Republic fleet. Which... Which, to be fair, the fleet was always, always, always outnumbered by the imps. Uh Uh-huh. You mean the Republic? Uh, Yeah, the the pubs were always outnumbered by the imps. And also, the servers, there's like a billion old Republic servers, so even that they have 1.4 million subscribers... Spread across like 1.4 million realms, so that right. makes it not I, very I have massive. A feeling they'll be consolidating those servers relatively soon. Yeah, At the same like, time, I, I think... remember we had half-hour queues. <laughs> yeah, your comment was that when we were first signing up, everything was had queues, and now all the servers are light population. And even if it's a totally reasonable thing to do, the moment you consolidate servers in an MMO. Your company's stock price drops, because yeah. that doesn't look good. Nope. Uh, the promotional video for the Old Republic said they were increasing the level cap, but they did not say to what. I can only um, assume it's 60. Yeah, I'm guessing they'll go up to 60 right now. Also announced that uh, HK will apparently be coming a be com- uh, becoming But a not HK-47, a HK model droid. An HK model, yes. Which? H- HK 50... what now? 51. 51. 51. That's clearly a nostalgia play on the... Yeah. The... No, you destroyed HK 47. Spoilers. Douche. We've already said it. <laughs> we said we beat the crap out of Revan and felt super bad about it. On a previous podcast, we could have new people. Hi, new people. <laughs> Welcome to the cast. Why Spoilers. haven't you played Knights of the Old Republic yet? You're fired from our audience. What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Because that's that's how audiences work. You're fired. Come back when you've played Knights of the Old Republic. Get a new job. Because we're not providing them. Nerd talk, now not including jobs. The presentation... Now, that used to be a thing. <laughs> the presentation for the Old Republic at the EA press conference was given by Dr. Ray of Dr. Ray and Dr. Greg, the founders of Bioware. Which probably many people have heard this anecdote, but the reason Bioware is named Bioware is because it was founded by two doctors, and the first thing they did was make firmware for x-ray machines. What's Bioware? And also, uh, one of the doctors is the business doctor, and the other doctor is the creative doctor. Oh, they both have medical degrees and business degrees. Which, dang, makes you sound pretty cool. I I don't know which one is which. Oh, Dr. Ray was giving this presentation. I think he's the business doctor, not the creative doctor. Some kind of doctor. I I just like calling them the doctors. It's a good word. 
one of them needs a, an awesome scarf, the other one a bow tie. All right, you're going to have to explain this next one to me, Pyro. Uh, it was going around on Twitter that people were excited for lowercase ct capital OS, and I could not figure out what the heck anybody was talking about, but apparently it's actually Watch Dogs. The... Yeah, I'll, I'll give you credit on this one watching the trailer for it, the, the gameplay footage. This looks cool. Also, new IP. Also new IP. This is... It, it's kind of like... It, it's like a, Assassin's Creed mixed with... I want to say Syndicate in, in the hacking abilities. It, definitely like Syndicate in the fact that it is sociopathic and terrifying. There's a scene yeah. in the stage demo where the player character hacks some traffic lights... And causes a huge traffic wreck. And to just get to sort the of the person that he wanted. Sort of in the background of you shooting enemy soldiers and pursuing your target or whatever is just this civilian dude. And he, there's this lady who was driving the car he was in. And he's like, oh god, talk to me. Wake up. Come on. And, it's like, and then you drag him out of the car. <laughs> yeah. And you, you have. It's like, dude, you just murdered that lady and he's not very happy about that and that hurts my heart like, it's... I, I am amazed how this game went from walking the city streets to hacking an entire club's cell phones in order to get inside just to cut off the signal so that everyone was more distracted with that than you walking in the door I was to... saying that's a bad bouncer I mean, a right. bouncer at a fancy club like that should not be distracted quite so easily. Uh, I, I mean, you scan the entire club floor to try to find someone who's connected to your target. And then once you've pinpointed them and where they're coming, he the, the player then went outside and waited for the person's car to approach, which he was tracking through GPS. And then as soon as he came to that intersection, you disabled all the lights so that all the cars would collide. At which point, people started shooting at you. Which I don't yeah. quite understand why I don't know how happened. they knew you were a bad guy, although it maybe they are connected to the database as well as you are. They are sci-fi. Because when you're walking around the club, there's little tooltips appearing over everyone around you who is like... That's telling you everything about them. A dad of two children and has a restraining order. Or what their credit score is. I, I saw one that said one of the club goers was HIV positive. Uh-huh. And so, I guess, as soon as shit goes down, such as an enormous wreck, potentially they're like, okay, let's start looking at everybody and see who we don't recognize, and then kill right. them. <laughs> it, it looks fantastically cool from someone who, like, really loved the old Hitman games, of just, yeah, part of this game is... I need to blend into the crowd and look completely normal while completing my objectives. That die. is exactly the gameplay hook of the Hitman games, where you interact with your environment, and there's like these puzzles of disguise and manipulation that can right. get you to your objectives in either more or less subtle ways. And yeah, that, that looked pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the biggest challenge in Hitman was, well, how do I get in and out only killing my one target, doing it in a way that it looks like I was not involved at all, and do it, like, in a flashy method. Uh, so, like, my, my favorite one was dropping, or it was in the, the most recent one that came out a while ago. Blood Money. Yeah. Is this the opera? Yeah, you switch the actor's gun so the actor gets shot on stage. That is everything I wanted. It was a performance of Tosca. And then right. after you switch the prop gun for the real gun, there's a dude sitting up in the uh, high roller box office who's freaked out by the fact that something has gone wrong on stage. And he comes down from the, the upper booth and is walking down the main aisle. And you drop and the chandelier drops. on him. Yep. That, that was brilliant. That was everything I wanted out of that game. I, I did that level in two ways that I, I was very satisfied with, as you do it the completely stealthy way, where it's just like crazy freak accidents and nobody even knows Mr. 47 was there. Yeah, no, and you then, get to walk out at the end of that one, no one has any idea that they're even looking for you. 
The other really nice touch to that is that as you play through the game and you get points and progression, RPG progression and stuff, uh, you can unlock some really powerful guns. And I unlocked the Tommy gun with the uh, cylinder ammo, and I went through, and I just walked in the front door and killed the first person, and then killed every single person in the entire opera house, and destroyed all the computers, and I walked out, and then I, that was a zero notoriety bump, because there were no witnesses and no evidence. It was just everything was destroyed, and everybody was dead. So, the, the nice thing about Hitman is that you have, there are, there's lots of ways to do these things. Yeah, there there are there was an invisible point system in that game I recall for basically if a bystander saw you and you did anything like of notice around them you would tick up a point on this. It was and it's then very if you hard. Left a mission with that person alive, you would gain notoriety. Yeah, you get ranks at the end of a mission like the A B C S except they're not that and the best one, the S rank, is Silent Assassin. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think if you can manage to kill every single person and destroy all the computers, you can get Silent Assassin. And that's way harder than doing it the stealthy way, but it's possible. And so it looks like Watch Dogs will have the exact same sort of gameplay elements. Um... There's been speculation going around the internet, and Ubisoft has not made this clear, but Watch Dogs might be for Orbis and Durango, the future Sony and Nin and Microsoft consoles, because, uh, for one reason, it just looks so good. Yeah, that game looks phenomenal. Like, the, the graphics of your character stepping out into the street with the wind brushing his clothes and, and the rain pouring down on top of him looks fantastic. Well, there were no actual announcements about next-gen hardware at this E3, but I guarantee you 100% that the next E3, there will be next-gen hardware in your face, if not in your hands. So, this insider hubbub is that Watch Dogs might not be coming out on this generation. No, I'm guessing it'll be next-gen. Um, Assassin's Creed is sort of a case where I was bitter about the sequelization, and it's especially true in Assassin's Creed that if it were not on a one-year cycle, then maybe they would be doing things more interesting with the universe, which is to say progressing the Desmond storyline and the modern times, mm -hmm. and that since they're sticking around in the past, they're sort of iterating on their old model, but I've kind of grown more accepting of that since Revelations, because Revelations... I've less, uh, less liking of Desmond. Well, eh, yeah, Desmond has... He's empty. There's nothing to him yet to like or dislike. He's just... He's nothing. Well, um, it's like, hmm, here's the fun parts of the game. Oh, crap, I have to play... Uh, that was especially bad in one. Uh, the Desmond parts in... Uh, two and Brotherhood weren't so bad. Like, but stop the, taking me out of the fun stuff. I yeah, it, it was egregious in one, because it's like, here, let's waste five minutes of your time. You have to go stand in the bathroom for a minute, and then you go to bed, and then you get out of bed, and then you get back in the animus. That was I fun. I hope we had fun playing the other character. Oh, this one doesn't have weapons. But, but like, if they got a chance to take two years, two and a half years to change up their technology in a big way, then the next game would be on the moon and you'd be piloting spaceships instead of uh, boats. Which, there's boats in Assassin's Creed 3. And, hey, boats. But, you know what? The old engine, the old system, and exploring the past and saying that historical figures were Templars and that the Apple of Eden and these Forerunner artifacts have been responsible for all of history is super interesting and the gameplay is fun and the animations are still great so you know what if you're gonna give me 40 more hours of this every year i would i'll take it 60 dollars a year 40 hours a year uh, this this stuff at uh, this level of improvement 100 i'll take it sign me up 
Harrison, uh, your money is in the mail. <laughs> the Ubisoft demo had a lot of climbing through trees, and the animations for that are very exciting. Obviously, Assassin's Creed is a lot about climbing, and in colonial America, there, there were no tall of... buildings, because right. the, we just got there. And Back when New York was one building and the other building. <laughs> and both of them were two-story buildings. Yep. If that. And in exchange for that, you sort of have traversal of natural environments. Uh, moving around trees and rocks and cliffs looks really great. And there's... So we're going from urban to... I'm super stoked to about having a female assassin, but it's warfare. like... I, 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 I am very excited about having a female assassin... And you know what? The female assassin should have been the protagonist of the console game. You yeah. shouldn't have put her on the Vita. It, it would have been something different for the franchise. I feel like nobody's going to play this because it's on the Vita. I think and so have... they went with, like, oh, this is probably a safe bet. I think you have to buy a Vita, Pix. There it is. There's your reason to buy a Vita. And she throws her hands in the air. I, I love Assassin's Vita Creed. Vita one person. And I'm a Sony fanboy, and I, I am probably still not going to play this game. But uh, another interesting thing about the female assassin, who is named Avalyn, apparently, in the Vita game, is that even among uh, press without any feminist leanings, the, the bullet point for the Vita Assassin's Creed game seems to be, hey look, a female protagonist, which uh, I always... That seems funny to me, because it's like, you would never have the except, bullet point, hey look, a male protagonist. Yeah, well, except to them, it, to me, to us, it's like, yay, finally, and to them it's like, oh look, this is so weird. Yeah, it's like, well, that's different. And it's like, well, yes, it kind of is L different. Like it's some kind of marketing ploy, like, the, like being able to change the color of your characters in Street Fighter or something. Like, it's, oh, this is different and weird. We would have never thought to do that. This is sort of another reason well, that I well, feel it like... it seems like the, the opinion that, uh, that Ubisoft seems to be giving us is that, yeah, no one in Desmond's family <laughs> was born female. Yeah, and just a little yeah, but bit those of were the uninteresting ones, because they're women. Right. That I've wondered about. Yeah, actually, there is a documented female, protag uh, documented female assassin. Uh, there's actually several scenes in Assassin's Creed where you're experiencing the genetic memories of somebody being born, and that's kind of weird. So Yeah, that was a little weird at the start of Assassin's Creed 2. Not gonna lie. First quick time event, be born. You also see uh, genetic memories of some of, of one of the assassins being conceived on a rooftop in, like, Masayaf. And huh. the female assassin, you totally see her being an assassin and jumping around and then they bow in on a rooftop and <laughs> then run away. But, yeah, just an Assassin's interesting lore note stealthily. about right. Assassin's Creed is that we don't know if Altair is related to Ezio. And that's sort of like, that's a big question to me because... Yeah, we do. We know because it's all connected by Desmond's genetic memories. Right, but you have ancestors that are not related to each other in any way. Like, I mean, even your mother and your father ostensibly right. have as little genetic relationship as possible. Right. You know those two were not genetically related, but you know that through genetics, they are connected to Desmond. Uh-huh. So, they, we don't know if Altair and Ezio are directly related. There's kind of a hint at that, except not really, because in Revelations, you play Desmond playing Ezio, experiencing Altair's memories... But that is through some artifacts that do not we do not know that they require genetic relationship. Right. So, uh, that well, is probably a mystery that will never be answered for me, but it, it taunts me. Um, so much. There's a scene in the Ubisoft demo for Assassin's Creed 3 where Connor is walking through a village, and there's a baker who's like, uh, my shipment didn't arrive, please help me. And he's talking directly to Connor. And then there's a interface element that pops up, and it's like, quest added, get the baker's shipment. 
and then Connor just walks off. Like, he does not respond to this dude who is talking directly to him in any way. I thought that was funny because it was exactly the opposite of uh, the way Mass Effect 3 handled it in a kind of creepy way, which is that uh, Shepard would just be walking around and overhear people talking not to Shepard, and Shepard would be like, I know, I'm going to stick my nose in these other people's business. He'll just show up later, and, or show, depending on who you're playing as, and be like, yeah, that thing you were talking about to not me, I solved it for you. And then Assassin's Creed 3 goes creepy in exactly the opposite way, where people are talking directly to you and you just ignore them. Please help me. No. Oh, I suppose if I have time for a side quest. There's a new Gears of War game in development. And yeah. this is another sort of sequelitis thing, like Halo 4, where the trilogy is over. And then they're making another one. I, I will be fair to say, I do really like the people who are making this. I just I don't own think... all the Painkiller games, right. which People Can Fly is developing the Gears 4 game, and they're very well beloved for Painkiller, which has lots of ridiculosity in it, which is the appropriate word to use. Which you'd as... think would be appropriate for the Gears universe, considering I think Epic literally forgot what they could do with this franchise after the second game. They're like, huh, we can do giant war, uh, biological war engines with huge turrets on their back. Yeah, let's just do more of that. More <laughs> of that in every way. Like, guys, we, we, we can do something else. No. Nope. Run with I the know same. less about the new Gears of War game than I know about Halo 4, so... But do you know if the plot is has a new arc to it? That's not the locust anymore, so, is it? Considering we kind of wrapped everything up at the end of Gears Three, like I, I know something about some mysterious person going to jail and having his face shrouded. No, I don't know very much about solved in Gears Three. Like we may be going back and playing the early part of the war before Marcus was incarcerated at the at the start of the first game. Because that's Gears 1. Marcus is broken out of prison for apparent, like, disobedience in the field. Uh, so apparently there's some he promotional imagery. He, he did. Where he somebody is breaking out of jail. Superior's face. And it's teased that it might be Marcus, but also it's not confirmed, so it probably isn't. Right. Well, maybe they're starting a new arc. I, we won't know much about that until it comes out. I, I have all the painkiller games, and they're well-beloved. And I've never actually played them. I just, just another think instance. that it's this hard to come up with a new shooter franchise, that we need to keep Halo and Gears going. Uh, one thing some people have said is that this console generation is getting long in the tooth. And it's back at the beginning of the console cycle, everybody, the Sony and Microsoft were claiming that it was going to be a 10-year cycle, and nobody believed them. And everybody was like, we're going to have new consoles in five years. And now it's 7 going on 8, and there's not even an announcement. There's no official name for the Xbox 720 or the No, I, I the legitimately think this is going to be a 10-year cycle, but we need some bloody new games for it. But, yeah, it's new IPs tend to come out more on new hardware. Right, because you can because do things that you couldn't on the previous hardware. You have early adopters who are purchasing the consoles, and then they're like, well, I need to buy some games since I bought these consoles because I'm an early adopter, so I'll take some risks because there's not anything out that I can fall back on, so I'll just buy some things I haven't heard of. And the retreads of the old series are a symptom of that. They're just the safe bet to bide time and develop things cheaply while we're at the very end of the previous console cycle. I, I don't want a new se a new console, honestly. Yeah. I'm, I'm... Like, I barely, I feel like I barely got to know this one. Well, unfortunately, the people who are developing the games, like, their ideas 
can still, for the most part, be achieved incredibly well on the two primary pieces of hardware we have this generation. The, the problem I see with trying to, trying to put efforts into a new console is that, like, for a while, I think, I feel like we're kind of done on that front, you know? There's... We are not. I, I, I see where you're coming from, but there is me, so much room. Okay. Um... Maybe you'll understand a little bit better. This for a long time, the whole point of developing a console was we gotta crank out new consoles so that we can get better graphics, better graphics, better graphics is the big is the big thing. We wanna have better graphics, more realistic, da da da. That's that's our big build up. That's our defining thing for what makes games good. And I'm like, no, guys, just like, okay, we've got the graphics are good enough. Let's just make some good games out of them now. <laughs> Right. Uh, two things for that. One is that, no, the graphics are not good enough. There's still a lot of room for them to improve. But that is much less interesting than... Uh, there are more things to be gained from better hardware than graphics. Um, there are AI routines that cannot be done. Uh, they say that Assassin's Creed came about because of the hardware level. And that... The defining characteristics of Assassin's Creed are the procedural animations, where if you walk through a crowd, your dude will turn his shoulders or put his hand on someone else's back to push him out of the way, and that the reason that franchise came when it did is because that was not possible on previous generations, and that they're still working very hard to be able to do the procedural animations they can. They're having to optimize real tight to get that in there. And the other thing that you can gain, even if you stay at the same graphical level from better hardware, is you can get 60 frames a second. Does every Xbox 360 game you play right now get 60 frames a second? I wouldn't be able to tell you because I don't uh, have a frame rate thing. Oh, well, uh, there, there's lots of complaints about noticeable lag in lots of video games, especially nearer to the end of the cycle. And just upgrading the hardware to allow for the existing graphics to run more consistently would be a huge boon. And the Xbox 360 has 512 megabytes of RAM in it. And the computer I'm talking into right now has... 32 Your gigabytes. computer has to also do a lot of other stuff. Right. Right. But uh, like RAM, this show. <laughs> like this show. And like edit this show when we're done. And but my computer can hold actual people in memory. In Assassin's Creed, if somebody is off the screen, then they kind of vanish. In Saints Row the Third, only one car has persistence when it's not on the screen, and that is the car that you were last in. If you're not confined to 512 megabytes anymore, then programmers can start uh, keeping track of all the cars you've driven, uh, so that you can put one here and put one there, make a roadblock, and uh, see what happens it, that you can't do just because there's not enough memory in current consoles. And... I'm excited about there being a new console generation, even though I don't play on consoles, because developers develop for consoles. And even though my computer has plenty of memory, uh, Saints Row the Third is developed to only keep track of one car persistently. And I, I have to live with that on PC, even though I have plenty of RAM. And so, if there's a new console generation, that benefits me as a PC player, because developers will develop games that do more things. Um, another thing that comes with new console generations is the new control schemes that, and I, I expect that you guys will be a bit ambivalent about this, but there will be motion controls out of the box almost certainly in new Sony and Microsoft consoles. You know there will be on board about uh, motion controls. Eh, if they're auxiliary and guaranteed, then that gives developers a lot more freedom. Because if you're developing for Kinect, you are targeting a niche audience, and 
Tell me that you don't like Dance Central, Sen. I thought it was well-designed. I also thought that it is the only well-designed thing for the Kinect. But if everybody has a Kinect, then people can, then developers can start using it where appropriate, rather than having games that are all Kinect or nothing. I, 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 I think I that would be nice. Don't... Let's think about how many times playing Mass Effect 3 we ended up dying and thought, man, I would have lived through that if I could have just told Garrus to shoot. Is the number above one? Because I don't think it's above one. Well, that specific scenario, no, but I, there's tons of situations where more inputs have benefited games. I, I feel the... like... I, I see where you're going, where, like, if everybody has it, then it won't be a gimmick, but look at the Wii. It's still a freaking gimmick, years later. I'm right. not saying that it, it won't be a the, gimmick. The controls are still shoehorned in as a freaking gimmick. Right. Six Axis is totally gone from PlayStation 3 games. Yeah, it was Like, there everybody like has Six games, Axis. And it like, is not and used for work. anything ever, because it sucks. Right. And... I, I don't think that connect or even move will go that way. I think uh, other things that a new console could be guaranteed to have that old consoles aren't is storage. Like, Xbox 360 was not guaranteed to have the ability to store data when it came out. And so developers had to not rely on data storage. It, an Xbox 720, it'll have a hard drive and it'll have a big hard drive in it. And it can be designed such that all games install and then you don't need discs. I would like that. No, that's never going to happen. Yeah, no. Um, there will always well, be physical media. There, that is never going to happen because media. DRM. Right, and the answer to that is 25 character codes associated with your uh, gamer tag which goes alongside the interest of reducing used sales, because if you can invalidate a disk when its 25-character code has been used, Microsoft would be all up in that. And that sucks from a consumer rights perspective, because you want to be able to sell your stuff back. Uh, or I want to be able to loan it to my friend so that he can determine if he wants to buy it or whatever. Sure. And I am totally sympathetic to that. At the same time... I, would, I will tell you, I would never have bought or gotten into the Mass Effect franchise if I hadn't been able to borrow the games from him first. Uh-huh. You can... That's not completely obliterated, because you could play it at his house, and people who live together, there is already the system for XBLA games, where you can play it on an Xbox either that is in possession of the purchasing gamer tag, or was the Xbox on which it was originally purchased. And so, it, you can have him even bring his gamer tag to your house on a memory unit and play his XBLA games. Provided you make, the console makers want you to be able to do that. Uh, that's how XBLA already works. And that yeah, retail would not become more like here. that. Hypothetically speaking. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being cynical, but... I foresee the them way... trying to take away as much of that as possible. That's true. Uh, my broad point, but absent of any of the specifics, is that there are more things to do with consoles. It's not over. We're not done. There's, there's still stuff left to do. Well, yes, you can release a numbered console with a higher number that will then force players to spend at least, if not more, of their money on that console if they want to continue playing games. I'm sorry to have to be the one to be incredibly cynical about this, but graphically, games aren't going to be increasing much in the next three years. Mechanics-wise, sure, they could. The idea of having more memory insides so that we can keep track of more AI scripts, that's a fine one. Do we absolutely need to at this moment? Probably not, because we still haven't peeked out the potential of the systems that we have currently. Uh, you're full of shit. Uh, 
More RAM will make everything much, much better. But that's only it, one aspect that you're upgrading. Sure. And does that matter? Is, if it turns out that games look better, play better, and is, have more interesting systems in them, is does it matter that you only on upgraded one part? Says, now with more RAM going to appeal to the average user? No. The thing that's if you put a sticker on the box that is... says now with better graphics, more mechanics, and better stories, then yes, because facial animations, assets, are a big thing. The Xbox 360 has a DVD drive. That games are confined to 6.7 gigabytes. That limits the assets people can use. That's L.A. Noir fills up a disc and is Four times. is desiring space desperately, and. A funny thing about moving a, g a game across multiple discs is that if you have two discs, you don't have double the storage because there's things that need to be on both discs right. to make it run. And so... So the only thing that's ending up on the, on the additional disc is those specific uh, scenarios for that disc, the core mechanics, and then the voice acting. The... From the developer's perspective, you kind of get like one extra gig to put stuff on by adding a disc right. rather than six. The way it worked on L.A. Noir for the Xbox 360, since we've already mentioned that example, is that you, the, the game was broken up into like kind of chapter type things where as you climbed up or were knocked down in some in certain instances of the plot. Can I spoil this? Yeah, it's been out for like almost two years. <laughs> okay, so as you climbed up the ladder, or at one point were demoted, um, you could keep track of this in your little notebook or whatever. I loved that UI. Anyway, uh, that's, uh, each of those was like a chapter, and you got like a different uh, companion NPC, and you got you moved on to a different disc in the story. So as the story changed, oh, you got promoted, da, 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 that wraps up. Okay, now move on to the next disc. Do we know how many discs the PlayStation 3 version of the game had? Just the one, as far as I remember. One, maybe two. Maybe. Well, I can look this up, though. So, hell, you put because a Blu-ray Blu drive Blu and Blu in Durango, way more space. and you've, you've improved the Xbox 360 substantially. Because the developers, it's not just that... The L.A. Noir game had four discs. It's that the developers made decisions and compromises. One disc for the PS3. The L.A. And Noir was. It's not like the PS3 had all the space they could ever want. It's that that's where they stopped because this is the limitations they had. There's more things they could do, and if you put a hard drive in it and have a real solid install mechanism then you can spread things across multiple discs without making compromises. Right, I'm just thinking about the complaints from developers that, well, these games that are designed to last so long are, we're spending all of our resource in, resources into improving the graphics rather than improving the gameplay, and what we're ending up with is multi-million dollar projects that last about six hours. Which At the same time, I, I will trade Mike. a game that is an amazing experience and only six hours long for a game that is a subpar experience and forty hours long, or four hundred or whatever. Right, Final Fantasy. absolutely. I, I, I'm totally okay with the holy crap that was the most amazing thing I've ever played. That's only six hours long. I'm a big fan of Portal Two, and I am a big fan of Fortune Summoners and Offspring Fling. Both of which run on this 32 gigabyte, uh, 3.5 gigahertz powerhouse machine. Great. <laughs> uh, having a better hardware does not preclude you iPad. from developing cheaper games. And guaranteed storage is great for indies because you're not going to distribute on physical media. You're going to be distributing downloadable. And you can't have downloadable titles if you don't have storage. And you can't have big downloadable titles if you don't have big storage. Right. I don't know, I, I heard an interesting report from, uh, from the people who do extra credits that apparently we're running out of spectrum that information can be transferred on wirelessly. 
Like, that's uh, really proving to be I true. love extra credits, but that, that, that episode, episode was a good. little bit lacking. I mean, it is true that there is a finite amount of radio spectrum, but it's, it's not as interesting or dire as they made it out to be. Right. Because, uh, uh, among other things, we haven't reached that ceiling at, at all yet. Uh, there's still a lot of useless things using spectrum. Like, just recently, we got rid of... UFC television and converted it to cell spectrum, and there's efficiency improvements to be had just with new technology. Oh, we're not at the physics limits of it yet. And the other thing is that uh, once you've filled up radio waves, you still have line of sight wireless, and you also have, um, and there's line of sight wireless like microwave that can go through walls, and it is directional, but it is not. It, so it's not omnidirectional like radio is, but it uses different frequencies than radio do, and so it's not subject to the same limitations. And then there's old-fashioned wires that... But we make everything wireless at this point, because why the heck not? And if push really comes to shove, then plugging a console in is fairly trivial to wired. Right. So, that, that limitation does exist, but it is not practically relevant in our lives and won't be for quite a while. Well, I'm going to pause this here for a second, so you can edit this part out if you need to. Okay. Um, we've been going for like an hour and a half now. Yeah, and we have not gotten near the end of my do list. Do we want to keep going uh, for tonight's show, or do we want to take a break and save some of this content for next week, too? Uh, e or E three still has two more days in it. So we're uh, gonna, we're gonna have a hard time filling next or trying to get to everything next week with two more days for of E E three announcements. Right. And then even then, I'm sure that we're I'll have played a video game for next week too. Yeah. So, so. We should probably try to power through it. Power through it. Criterion is making a new game in the Need for Speed franchise, Need for Speed Most Wanted. And the first thing that strikes me about this is there's already a game need named Need for Speed Most Wanted. Which, I... It's fine, but it's just kind of hard to talk about things the, the guy if they have the same the names. names. In the video game industry, yeah, he died like three years ago. So, uh, <laughs> They're just, yeah, it's like... Forget wireless spectrum. The real resource we're running out of is names we, in video games. We lost Ted, and Ted was kind of the name guy. So, yeah. Uh, that's why Sim City is named Sim City, well, even that's though... Because Sid Meier's a dick. <laughs> but wasn't there a game for the ZX couple... Spectrum named Sim City? Actually, no. This, this is just so that um, Yahtzee can continue to make the joke of reviewing the previous version of the game. That was actually <laughs> yes. named the same thing. Because that's been going on for a while. And then, what is the... Is Laura Croft named... I think the name of that game might be Tomb Laura Raider. Croft. Tomb Raider. It is same as the 1997? Six? I think it's earlier than that. There are more... That's so many repeat titles. So many repeats. Uh, we could potentially get to the point where there are more repeat titles than there are original IPs. And maybe, maybe that would turn me around on my original IP's perspective. No, I think this is a thing this year. I think there are more reboots, relaunches, and more things just named the original title of the game than there are new IP's. I'm okay with iterating on a license that had previous games. You know what? If it's the, valid, the thing that just sequel, bothers me is add it. a subtitle. Right. I think so that the we can Tomb Raider thing, things. though, the main conversation we wanted to have, that's probably going to have to get pushed off for later. Right, I want to see I've got more some, recording of I've got that. some recommended reading that I have posted to, um, I don't remember if I've tweeted everything about this, but I will get to it. Okay, but yes, there there is a new Tomb Raider coming, and honestly, as, as Pyrosim quotes in, in this little article we're looking at, it is a Lara Croft abuse simulator. It's funny if you look at the images in the Wikipedia article, because it's just like even the cover art and a promotional image of Laura Croft is like 
She has holes in her. She's covered in blood and mud, and her hair is, like, ripped out. Goes back to, like, kind of the sexualizing of violence on women, but... Yeah, it, it is how much can we beat the crap out of this person, which I, I suppose if the goal is to try to create an origin story explaining how this, like, ridiculously tough female character in in the Tomb Raider world came to be how she is, like, I suppose showing this as, like, yeah, she's probably the toughest female character in all of gaming. I, I guess is a thing, but, like, I think we might be going to extreme points when we're watching, like, Rebar get shoved through her. Female or no, this might be the most abuse I've seen any character take in any video game. That, that, it's just... She looks know. real I, bad after a while. I did once watch a shirtless Solid Snake get electrocuted for, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, you're right. There's, <laughs> there is some character abuse in Metal Gear Solid. But still, this is them. right up there. I, I Metal Gear? At the end of Metal Gear Solid 4. I watched Solid Snake walk through a microwave. As an old man. <laughs> so old. And, and, and your life has been so hard. <laughs> and you give everything. And people don't appreciate you. Then they have a wedding on a runway. Man, that uh, sucked. <laughs> go back to uh, Need for Speed real quick. The Need for Speed Most Wanted is an open world game, which is the only little bit of solace for people who wanted a new burnout from Criterion. Right. We're not getting a new burnout, so they made Need for Speed. And if it's Criterion and they make a really good game, then potentially Need for Speed could serve a lot of those wants, except uh, Need for Speed has licensed cars, and owners of car licenses don't like it if you do tons of destructibility on their cars. I don't know why. Because, like, that, you'd think that would be, like, a positive selling point. Like, yeah, man, that Lancer, I rolled it, like, 15 times and still drove away in this game. That, that's actually, like, the limitation that uh, owners provide to developers is, like, you cannot have the driver's cockpit deformed in any way. So it's like the trunk will be totally destroyed, and it'll be the body will be torqued so like basically forty they will degrees. That but car then the driver's the cockpit will be untouched. Right. And that is not the, the big appeal of burnout. Mostly is destroying the cars. Yeah, the car is. And if you make those compromises, it's not as good. Nope. Uh, burnout is another thing where it. It is desperate for more RAM and more processing power to do what it does because it does the dynamic deformation of the cars. Yeah. And you can make that... You can have tiny little dings and dents that are much more specific the more RAM you have. Um, but yeah. Tomb Raider, I kind of have gotten less interested in it as I've seen more press. The announcement trailer from... Gosh, what must have been last E3 had me really psyched, and then uh, I just kind of grown less and less interested in it as I've seen more. Especially because the distinction that I kind of it's it's not really a strong distinction, but makes me less interested is that previous Tomb Raider games have always been about an adventurer going out and seeking adventure, whereas uh, Tomb Raider has Lara Croft just traveling, and then shit goes terribly, terribly wrong. Right. And I don't want to play a disaster game. I want to play an adventure game. And I like I like my characters well, to be uh, kind of strong and in control. As we were kind of saying, this feels more like as a, a survival it. horror game than an adventure game. Uh-huh. Like, it is what kinds of horrible things can this character get thrown into and push her way out of. Where I have the problem with it is that one bit where they sexualize all this violence for an obvious male audience. Where you have the You were You pointed this out. Her. You pointed this out when I was watching this trailer while we were driving somewhere and you weren't looking at the screen I was right. looking at where it was just the violence where she's just getting, you know, 
beaten up and falling and catching fire and all she's this. She's in a, a, like a spider cocoon and then the, the she's in a tight space. And the, the, the shrieks, game. grunts, moans and whatnot sounded incredibly sexual. There Again, this is part of that rape culture that I keep bringing up. This sec- Part of it is sexualizing violence against women. Right. Uh, that, that, that is one sexy. One of the things uh, unrelated to that feminist thing that uh, I didn't like so much in the new videos of the Tomb Raider is that there's quite a bit of her talking to herself in, like, complainy tones. It's like... Uh, I, I understand even why you would be whining, because this is a terrible situation. And also she's young. But there's nobody to listen to you whining, so why but are... But she's you... young. And, I mean, I used to do that a lot. She's also yeah. internalizing voices from her family members. Eh. Because apparently Actually, we're going with the plot of the Angelina Jolie film where Dad was yeah, a famous adventure. I, like, oh great. I liked that callback. And, and her dad in that scene looks exactly like her dad from Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. No. Uh, don't give those movies credence. Those aren't a thing. Block them I out. I kind of liked the first one of that movie. It had Daniel Craig in it. That doesn't make something good. <laughs> Just look at Quantum yeah. of Solace. There's <laughs> there's a CG Vishnu in it that like uses its stone arms to break down a temple. It's like ra ra, I am Vishnu. <laughs> it was cool. Let's not talk about any of the Tomb Raider films. Uh, there's a thing that's been going around on Twitter calling 2012 the year of the bow, and yeah. Tomb Raider is driven a lot by bow and arrow, and then Assassin's Creed. You know, We're it's not even... We're not giving Laura Croft even, the gun. It is not even just in games. I know. We've got examples here. It, it's also, but yeah, it's the also... The Avengers, The Hunger Games. Brave. Brave, without a doubt. I pick Sar. Um, <laughs> League of Legends now has, what, three bow champs? Not even... Oh, what's another movie? Hunger Games, yeah. Yeah, we got that. On here. Yeah, apparently bows are just in. Archery. It's hot. Uh, the thing that I really like about that is not just that all of these uh, games and movies feature archery prominently, it's that they feature archer, archery so prominently that it's on the box art or official poster. And apparently which... it's more powerful than firearms. Just saying. Um, and well, there's, that, there's, that, there's that really, um, depending on how brave ends up coming out that scene where she's dr- like as as she's uh pulling back the arrow like part of the seams in her dress and corset are ripping that could be really iconic if that turn if they do it right archery it's sexy not like sexy but empowering right that's also a kind of detail thing that could benefit from more ram <laughs> i'm just gonna jam my thumb on this button for the rest of the show i guess at least we've been warned <laughs> Um, does this mean that in two or three centuries we'll invent, or sorry, decades we'll invent the crossbow? Uh, actually, the crossbow crossbows are in Far Cry, I think. Also in Diablo, which you can fire without reloading. Uh, also, there's no ammo in Diablo, which is great. Yeah, I like being able to just shoot my quiver. Shoot just forever. Like, there's no arrows, I'm just wearing the quiver. It says the guy who complains about how difficult it is when you call things by name by names that are also given to other things. You're referring to the third game when... What you really oh. mean is the third game, and you're, you know, using the name of the first one. Uh, no, that's I, not I, such I mean, a big I'm still deal. playing the original Diablo. I mean exactly what I'm saying. No, you don't. No, you Diablo, are a dirty liar. Diablo 1 is fantastic. No, it's not. The trick is that I have a fallback if there's confusion, and, like, if I... I have the option of saying Diablo 1, whereas SimCity 1 does not mean quite... Tomb Raider 1, I guess those kind of work. No, because they're prequels. Tomb Raider comes before Tomb Raider. Uh, SimCity has no chronology, so... Uh, well, they're reboots. Uh, Tomb Raider is a different universe than Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah, this is a totally different Lara from what I've read. Right. Allegedly. Can we yeah, reboot I, things that's that confirmed. actually need to be rebooted? Like, I don't know, I, think it, I can think of what, a lot of franchises. What, what, do you, what give, give me one. Okay, a game that needs to be rebooted because it got completely screwed up. Let's go with Too Human. 
that's not a game that needed to be rebooted. That's a game that needed to be remade. Right. Uh, that's not. Let's go. A reboot is typically for a long-standing continuity. That is just a flawed game that needed to be done better. How or, about or Quake? D- a game that originally started as a. Quad- well, what about what about? Okay, so can we define um, what we mean by needs a reboot? Needs a reboot, as in the sequels have completely diverged from what the original core concept of the franchise was. To the could, point could where we, could we say, they are no longer recognizable we, as that thing. Can we shuffle, like... How do I want to say this? Yeah, because I, I think, I think I'm think i just trying to be careful that we don't conflate reboot and remake. Remake, to me, says we didn't have, like, the resources or yeah. whatever, the hardware to do this entirely the way we it, feel like it could have okay, been done Okay, I can give you an time. exact example of that. Resident Evil was taken from the original PlayStation version, Mm -hmm. which came out in, like, 1996, to the remake that came out on the Nintendo GameCube, which was essentially the same game, the same story, the same layouts, better graphics, additional scenes added. Done fantastically, I might add. I'm having a ridiculous brain fart here, but who's the guy who directed Edward Scissorhands? Tim Burton. Tim Burton's Batman movies and Christopher Nolan Batman movies existing with in different continuities right, that's a, is very important, that's and reboot. they're both valid. And so, I, I think both of those movies are worth making and watching, but they cannot be, they cannot exist in the same canon. Right, and so you're feeling this Tomb Raider will be the same? Well... I don't... If this Tomb Raider is really good, then it would be the same thing. Yeah. If this Tomb Raider is really good and also has a different attitude towards its universe that has similar background elements, then yes. Uh, Tomb Raider, as a continuity, sort of does not have enough background elements Well, it kind of doesn't work when you start adding some of the plots that got thrown in in some of the games. Uh, Even comic book characters usually don't have a whole ton of background preserved across reboots, but Tomb Raider has almost none. In all Batman continuities, his parents were murdered. This seems like a really terrible spot to interject this, but I'm kind of (laughs) hungry. It's like 9 o'clock. I'm not lying here. I'm looking forward to it. This has been a long show. So... uh, Is there any of this that we still absolutely have to touch on? Or can we leave any? I, I want to ask Sen if he saw the Theatrhythm Final Fantasy trailer. The yes, I have seen this game in action. I don't. Know. I bet your girlfriend's gonna like that game. I don't think she is actually. No. She's going to complain. It's not the same. An <laughs> unbelievable well. amount when one song is out of key. Fair enough. And God help anyone. Who misclicks while playing a song she likes? <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it's it's a good music and it's a rhythm game. I don't know that I want to play a rhythm game, and I, I don't, I don't want to play a touch touch rhythm game. It exists. It looks it's crazy. A thing. It looks unique. I'm I'm not offended that it exists. At the same time, I'm not really excited. Uh, Humble Indie Bundle did $3 million in five days. Not surprised. And that's a wrap. All right, in the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Parasim. And we'll catch you next week for more E3 on Nerd Talk. More!